This video covers normal distribution stock return calculations. I'm your professor, Dr. Stephen Haggard. This is the normal probability distribution, and we tend to think of stocks as being normally distributed, though we know they're not exactly normally distributed because the lowest a stock return can ever be is negative 100%, and the normal distribution goes on forever in each direction. So we are truncated on the left-hand tail. Also, we tend to think that the tails of stock return distribution are a little fatter than the regular normal distribution. But in spite of all that, the normal distribution still tends to be our go-to for understanding the probabilities associated with stock returns. And let's talk about what the normal distribution looks like. By the way, it's not just for stock returns. You can use a normal distribution for many things, including intelligence, height, all sorts of things. So don't be confused and think this is purely about stock returns. But of course, that's what we're interested in here. Let's talk about the general design of the normal distribution. You really only need to know two numbers in order to be able to generate the entire distribution. You need to know the mean or arithmetic average, and you need to know the standard deviation. The mean defines where the center of the distribution is. Think of the mean as the tenth pole in the middle. And the standard, de standard deviation defines the width of the distribution. The greater the standard deviation, the flatter this distribution will be. The one in the picture here looks like a fairly good sized mountain, but with a greater standard deviation, it will start to look more like a gentle rolling hill. And with a very large standard deviation, it will appear to look like a fried egg viewed from the side. And so don't be confused when you see different shapes to the normal distribution. That is because the difference in the standard deviation compared to the mean. So once we have standard deviation and mean, we can generate this distribution. Now we can say some pretty amazing things. We know that 68.26% of all observations will lie between minus one and plus one standard deviation in anything that is normally distributed. We also know that anything between minus two and plus two standard deviations, that's going to be 95.44% of all observations. And if we go out to plus or minus three standard deviations, now we're looking at 99.74% of all observations. So we could say things like, there's a 68.26% chance that your data point will fall between minus one and plus one standard deviation. There's a 95.44% chance it will fall between minus two and plus two standard deviations. And there's a 99.74% chance that it will fall between minus three standard deviation and plus three standard deviations. Now on occasion, you will see approximations used for these. And the approximations we typically use are 68, 95, and 99. 68 and 95 make sense because of rounding. 99 doesn't make any sense because that number should round to 100 instead of to 99. However, if we did round to 100, we would have no tails left and therefore nothing to calculate and that would not be any fun at all. Let's take a look at our first example. A stock has returns of 4% 7%, negative 2%, and 15% over the last four years. What is the probability that the next return will be greater than 13.07%? Students look at problems like this and panic. First of all, they wonder how they're going to calculate a probability, forgetting that the normal distribution is there to provide you that probability. So that's going to be the missing piece of information when you see a question like this. The first step is to use your TIBA2 plus to find the mean and standard deviation. What we're actually going to find is sample standard deviation since we're only looking at a sample of returns. We don't have the whole population. 
and I will show you in the next slide how to do this calculation. The second step will be to find out how far the return in question, in this case 13.07%, is from the mean in terms of standard deviation. In other words, how many standard deviations away from the mean is 13.07%. And then finally, we're going to use the normal distribution to learn what this means from a probability perspective. Okay, let's use our TIBA2 plus to find the mean and sample standard deviation for our sample of returns. The first thing we want to do is hit the second key and then the number 7. Notice that the number 7 says data right above it. That's because we're going to enter data. Now you may have previously entered data here, so to make sure that that all gets cleared out, we're going to hit second and then CE slash C, which will clear that work. Now we're totally clear. And so I'm going to enter these standard deviations now. I'm going to enter them as percentages, but feel free to enter them as decimals if that brings you pleasure. Four, enter, arrow down. Now, by the way, your TIBA2 Plus is designed to do two stocks at one time, and then it can tell you things like correlation and covariance between the two stocks. We're not doing that here. We only have one stock. So we're going to skip right over Y01. X02 is 7. You got to hit enter, or it's like it didn't even happen. We're going to skip over Y02. X03 is, Z, is currently 0. We need to make it negative 2. Enter. Arrow down. Arrow down. X04 is 15. Enter. Now just to make sure I got all those right, I'm going to arrow back up through them and check them out and make sure that I got them in the right place and that I got all the negative signs I need and it looks like I'm good to go. So now I can actually do my statistical calculations. And the way to do that is to hit the second key and the number 8. Notice it says STAT right above the number 8. And it's going to immediately pop up the word LIN. Uh, just ignore that. We're going to arrow down and see that we get a sample size of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that looks fine so far. Arrow down. It says that our mean or arithmetic average is 6. That looks right. In fact, we could do a quick check. Uh, 4 plus 7 is 11, minus 2 is 9, plus 15 is 24, 24 divided by 4 is 6. So we know that's right. Arrow down, our sample standard deviation is 7.07. .07. Now, there is one more standard deviation that you can get here, but don't use it. It's not the correct one. We're doing sample statistics here, so you need to use the sample standard deviation. Now that we know the mean and sample standard deviation for our distribution, we can find out how many standard deviations 13.07% is away from the mean. How do we do that? We use our formula here, the number of standard deviations equal x which is the returning question, in this case 13.07%, minus x bar. Anytime you see a bar over a variable, it denotes the mean or average amount. And in this case, that is 6%, as we got from our TIBA2+. And we're going to divide that difference by the sample standard deviation. Once again, from our TIBA2+, we know it is 7.07%. .07 and if you do the math, the top and the bottom are both 7.07%, .07%, so we're looking at exactly one standard deviation above the mean. Okay, we were asked to figure out what percentage of observations will be greater than 13.07%, and we just learned that 13.07% .07 is one standard deviation above the mean. In fact, let's take a moment here and look at this normal distribution in terms of our example. In our example, the mean is 6%, and so the mean of 6% would be right here. And then this return at one standard deviation above the mean would be 13.07%, .07 
and we add another standard deviation, we could get to 20.14% and so on. So what percentage of observations are above 13.07%? What we're looking for then is this tail right here, everything above positive one standard deviation. We can go about finding that in a couple of ways. Number one, we can note that plus or minus one standard deviation is 68.26%. And that everything outside of that, therefore, would be 31.74%. That's going to include both of these tails. By the way, how did I get 31.74%? It's 100% minus 68.26%. Gives me 31.74%. Both these tails together, the minus one standard deviation on out and plus one standard deviation on out, contain together 31.74%, but we only need to know the amount that is in the top tail. How do we find that? Well, the first thing is to recall that the normal distribution is symmetric about the mean. It means that's the same on the both sides. And so these tails have to have equal amount of probability in them all we have to do is divide by 2. And so we can easily find that this tail contains 31.74 divided by 2, which is 15.87%. And so the probability that the return will be higher than 13.07% is 15.87%. Let's work another example. Using the same stock, in other words, the same mean and standard deviation, what is the probability that the stock will not lose more than 8.14%? Now this problem is a little tricky in a couple of ways. First of all, note that lose means negative. So we're not actually looking at a return of 8.14% here. We're looking at a return of negative 8.14%. And note that not lose more than is the same as saying we'll earn at least. And so keep that in mind as we work this problem and look at our normal distribution. So how many standard deviations away from the mean are we at negative 8.14%? Once again, we get out our trusty formula and we just plug in the numbers. Negative 8.14% minus the mean, which is 6%, gives us negative 14.14%. Divided by 7.07 .07 gives us negative two standard deviations. So we know that negative 8.14% is two standard deviations below the mean. Okay, so we're looking for the probability that the stock will not lose more than 8.14%, and we have already figured out that negative 8.14% is two standard deviations below the mean. And we are looking for the probability that the stock will not lose more than that much. Here's the probability that the stock will lose more than that much. Let's figure out how much that is. Between plus and minus two standard deviations, we have 95.44%. So that means that outside of plus or minus two standard deviations, we have 100 minus 95.44, which would be 4.56%. But we know these tails are symmetric, so we must divide by 2. So that tells us that there is 2.28% here. So how do we figure out how much probability is in the rest of the distribution? We need to recall that the entire distribution represents 100%. So if we merely take 100 minus this 2.28, we get 97.72%. So there's a 97.72% that this stock will not lose more than 8.14%. Let's work one more example just to make sure you've got this straight in your head. Here's the question. What is the probability that this stock will not return more than 20.14%? 
Of course, this means that we need to figure out how many standard deviations 20.14% is away from the mean. And so we get out our formula again. 20.14% minus the mean of 6% gives us 14.14% divided by the standard deviation of 7.07% tells us that we are two standard deviations above the mean in the normal distribution. So here we are back at the normal distribution and we just got through calculating that 20.14% is two standard deviations above the mean. Now that we want to answer the question, what is the probability that the stock will not return more than 20.14%? If it returned more than 20.14%, we would be looking at this piece. So not return more than is this big piece over here. The easiest way to go about this is to figure out how much is in this tail and subtract from 100. And as we found out earlier, in these two tails, it is 4.56%. So this tail right here is 2.28%. And 100 minus 2.28% gives us 97.72%, which is this big area starting here and moving to the left. How do we interpret that? There is a 97.72% chance that the stock will not return more than 20.14%. Now since we haven't messed with any plus or minus three standard deviation problems, let's talk about that pretty quickly here. If I take 100 minus 99.74, I can see that this tail and this tail added together will be 0.26%. And given the symmetry of those tails, we know that each tail would contain 0.13%. And so what would we say if we were asking what the pr probability of a return lower than plus three standard deviations, it would be one minus 0.13% or 99.87%. Keep in mind when you mess with the approximations, you get different tails. For example, if we just use the approximation of 68, then these two tails become 16% apiece. And if we just use 95, then each of the tails contain 2.5% each. And if we're using 99 for our approximation, each tail contains 1.5% apiece. When you're working problems, you may see an answer that is slightly different than what you would have come up with. That's because either you were using the approximation and the question was using the exact or the opposite. So don't let that concern you.